Greetings, everybody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. We are getting set up for today's show. This is the photo moment. This is the opening intro bit. This is big and robust and awesome, and I can't wait to show that to you. Also, do a little mini unboxing of some new toys here. We'll uh, take a quick look at those. And uh, yeah, how's everybody doing today? Let's see, let me finish getting the show set up on this end. See how y'alls are doing this morning. Uh, let's see here. We're in the control room, get my chit chat open, and see who is here. We are once again simultaneously broadcasting to the Facebook. Hopefully, that is the working. We'll see what happens there. We got a, a three minute countdown clock going. I can see that in one of my various feeds here. And with any luck, it's all going to go well. Hey, this should be fun. Ooh, that's still loading. So, oh, where my chat go? How is everybody this morning? And where are you calling in from? And of course, if you are in the live chat, do say hello. I love to hear from you, people. Let's see. Oh, I've got to get the right chat up here on the Facebook side. And. Oh. Facebook's, I talked about this the other day, Facebook's thing is so bad, the way this, this whole back-end process works. It's really remarkably awful, um, but it's coming up. It's eventually working. Okay, Daddy MCC, good morning to you. Samir, Tim, Hassel, Donovan, people from all over the place. From Groningen, excellent. From the UK, watching in. Uh, are you going to talk about the GH5, uh, Tyler? That is a rumor. I do not comment on rumors. Uh, Carlos, hello. Tim Getchell. Tim's got a question. A few of your videos say why the GH5 is good for streaming. Yep, yep. But could the G85 be a substitute? Absolutely. Also, could you use a 4K camcorder at all? Need only to stream, not record, or pictures? Yeah, sure. Anything, any video camera, so video cameras are kind of easy for streaming, right? Because that's what they're designed to do is stream. And as long as they have a clean HDMI out, that's the key. You got to have a clean HDMI out. And by clean, that means there's no menus, no overlays, no other crap showing up on your screen. That's the key for a good streaming camera. This is why the Lumix cameras are so cool because they all have clean HDMI out. Now, they don't necessarily all go to 10-bit. You know, that's something on the GH5 does. We don't need that for live streaming. They, don't, they also don't all simultaneously record and output. Only the higher level cameras do that. Now, you said, Tim, that you don't need to do that. But anybody who's watching who does need to do that, the GH5 will do that. The GH5 will allow you to record internally and output the same signal. You could, in fact, even record your live show internally at 4K, but then output 1080p for streaming. Really, really cool capability. The G85, I do not know if it will record simultaneously while outputting. I do not have that camera, so I don't know. The G7, as an example, uh, will not. The G7 records, clean H uh, records video internally or will output a clean HDMI, but as soon as you hit the record button, the HDMI output stops. It, it shows a display that says recording or something like that. So uh, the lower end cameras don't do both. The higher end ones do. The G85, I do not know where that falls in um, on that. But if it doesn't matter to you, then by all means, the G85 is a perfectly good camera for that. I mean, the G7 is probably the least expensive camera these days from Lumix that would be good interchangeable with the HDMI out that would give you, um, and has audio input. That's the other key thing you want is, is a, not uh, this headphone jack in. So there you go. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's get this show started, shall we? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first Thras weekly live show here on YouTube, all about things photography, video, live streaming related. It's all kinds of good camera related fun. Right here at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at youtube.com slash photojoseph. I'm your host, Photo Joseph. You probably figured that out by now, but greetings, welcome, and welcome to the party. If you are watching live, really cool thing you can do here is you get to participate in the chit chat just like this. You can chat there. You can see the little chit chat over there. Look at the chat. If you have a question or a comment for me, make sure you type at Photo Joseph in front of it. It helps that to show up there live. Um, meanwhile, it is hopefully, we're hopefully also simultaneously streaming over to uh, to YouTube, uh, to YouTube, to YouTube. YouTube's definitely to Facebook. Apparently it's working. The funny thing is that it hasn't been actually showing up. Um, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm not going to even try to show it right now because I, it's, I see it, but God only knows what's actually happening. Let me hide this so it's not distracting. Ryan, if anybody comments over there, let me know if there's anything I need to know. Um, cause I'm not going to try and watch that one right now. It's just, it's too weird. Anyway, let's get into this. So today's show is primarily about this guy here, the small rig. It is awesome. My good friend, Sean Mark Nipper, who you guys have seen on the show and on the chat before, who lives locally here, introduced me to this company. Super awesome little setup. I went and bought a configuration that I thought would do what I needed it to do, and uh, and it did. It wasn't exactly what I intended, but I'm going to 
show you how I put this thing together. Also, we're gonna do a quick little unboxing. I might open with that actually, um, because look what I let me get this out of the way. Um, this is a big. This small rig has become big, but that's you know that's its point in life. Uh, let's see here, close up camera. Let's do a top down. Ooh, did I do a? Um, I didn't focus. I always forget that when I turn the camera on in the morning, I do have to focus that. Let's do, bring up my macros and overhead camera. Look what I got. This would be a Black Friday special. I got myself the remote for my Spark, an extra battery, and yet I said I have propellers because I'm, I'm down to my last ones and I would hate to break a prop and then not be able to fly. So this, um, uh, this was, in case you're if, you're, if you have a Spark and you don't have the remote, I know everybody watching who owns this has said, dude, get the remote, you gotta get the remote, so much better. So uh, Sean, again, my buddy Sean here, he bought one and I tried his remote on my Spark, and when the first thing I noticed was how much faster it flew. <laughs> Whoa, it goes a lot faster with the physical remote connected. And I didn't get to do much flying because it was a really crappy windy day, but it was interesting to experiment with it. I, I gotta get this thing. $150 though, like, oh, you know, I mean, you know, should have bought it in the first place, but didn't. Then Black Friday, it was at like 130 or maybe 120, and then for some reason on B&H, it was showing up at 107 with a $10 gift card. It's like under hundred bucks. I'm like, all right, I gotta get it. I gotta do this. So then I did that, got a second battery because now I have two um, and again, propellers. So let's just see what's inside of this thing here, inside this fancy little box here. And cause I have not opened it yet. As you can see, this just arrived yesterday. And obviously I know what it looks like, but hey, it's still fun to, unboxings are fun. Yeah. Let's go this way. Yeah. Unboxing. And we open the top, we open the top. Okay, we open, there it goes. We open the, come on, you can do it. There it is. Ooh, look at that. There she is. Some kind of manual, which I will undoubtedly read because I'm flying an object through the air at high speeds and I really don't want to lose it. Uh, that's it, silica gel, and that's it in the box. A little padding, and there we go. There it is. It's got its big fancy antennae, 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 whatever. Um, remotes, the controls. The programmable buttons, I know that's really cool. You can program, I guess, is it this one? You can do what you want. I think Sean had his, you hit that and the camera just immediately went <laughs> straight down, which was crazy cool. Power buttons, and then let's see this somehow. Here we go, this, no, this, there we go. That's it. That opens up, superb. And they did, uh, DJI did update their DJI app, so it now does work with the iPhone 10. It's gonna be interesting though, is because, look at this, because of the bezel-less phone thing, um, it's uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see if this is interfering. Ooh, face ID, hello. <laughs> it covers the Face ID camera, so I can't even unlock it right now. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that works in there. Um, it'll be curious. But there you go. I got me a physical remote for my DJI Sparky. I'm very excited about that. I am. That's going to be a lot of fun. One of the um, little tidbits here. So I'm, as most of you know, I'm going to New York next week, and then Indianapolis. We're going to talk about that. I'll give you the run through of all those in just a moment here. It is illegal to fly a drone anywhere over Manhattan. Is it anywhere in the state of New York or is it just Manhattan? Either way, you can't do it. There's a couple of parks where you can do it, but they're like, you know, basically in another state. They're really far away. So uh, I changed my hotel so that I'm actually staying in Hoboken so that I'm staying in New Jersey because New Jersey doesn't get these laws. New Jersey, you're allowed to fly it. And so I'm gonna be right on the water and my hope, you know, weather permitting and everything else is that I'll be able to do a little bit of flying and I know you got heliports around there. It's all you, it's all super restricted and rule, but that's okay. I'm going to follow all the rules. But I want to be able to fly there and maybe get some shots of Manhattan from that side. I think it'll be kind of cool. I don't know. Hopefully, it's a good idea. Hopefully, it's a good idea because it's going to be kind of a pain to get back and forth since I'm staying all the way over there. But hopefully, it's worth it. Okay, so that's that little remote. I'm excited about that. Let's uh, let's talk about New York real quick. Again, if you have questions as we go, make sure you put them into the chit chat comments. But before we do that, let me just remind you of what is happening in New York. I'm going to be at B&H on Thursday, December the 7th from 4 to 6 p.m. If you are in the vicinity, please do attend in person. It would be awesome. If you go to photojoseph.com slash BH, it will redirect you to the registration page or just go to the B&H event page and you'll find it there as well. Um, incidentally, if you cannot be there in person, What's cool is they're live streaming it. So go, again, go to that website, go to photojoseph.com slash BH, register for it, and you'll, I guess, get, I don't know how it works, I guess you get notified when it's streaming or something. Anyway, but they're live streaming it, which is super awesome and cool. So even if you can't be there in person, you'll be able to see it live. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm gonna be talking about live streaming. So it's gonna be a live stream about live streaming. Uh, this one is sponsored by Epifan. Epifan, the provider of the Pearl 2 that's sitting out in the other room that you're watching me on right now. And I am going to do a show on 
three stages of streaming, starting with the X2, the little one. So a very economical uh, setup. I've got some really cool little fun things I'm going to surprise you guys with out there. And then we're going to go mid-range, which we'll touch on just briefly, and that's using Wirecast, but using the, uh, do I have it here? I don't, using a HDMI to uh, USB converter, the AV.io. That's just going to be a very small part of the show. And then we'll go into the Pearl 2 for the big boy work. So you guys to do small, medium, and large. So that's what that show is going to be all about at BH on Thursday. Again, photojoseph.com slash BH. And again, if you can't be there in person, you can watch it streaming. So next week is going to be an all streaming week. Monday's show is going to be this massive, and I'm spending the rest of this afternoon planning this, putting together this massive thing about streaming where I will touch on the Pearl and X2, but not dive into them because that I'm going to be doing on Thursday. Um, but it's going to be a big kind of start to finish of streaming stuff. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to do a show on Tuesday as well because I'm going to be out of town Wednesday. So on Tuesday, I'm going to do a a compacted overview of my streaming setup here because I get questions about it all the time and I did an entire week's worth of videos at once and it's in a big playlist but it's like five hours of content so we're going to do a short version of that on Tuesday explaining what all of this is. Anyway, so that's next week is an all streaming week. So again, starting off um, in New York, well, kicking off the, the trip in New York on December 7th from 4 to 6 and then shortly after that, we'll be having bevies at uh, a place called Tavola, which is just down the road from BNH. If you are in the Manhattan area, this one we're not live streaming, sorry, but if you're in the Manhattan area and you want to join us at 6.30 p.m. on December 7th, go to either my Facebook page and find the event there or just type in photojoseph.com slash NYC and it will take you directly to that registration page. If, however, you are not in New York but you are in Indianapolis, I will be in at Robert's Camera in Indianapolis on December 9th. That is Saturday from 11 to 1 p.m. photojoseph.com slash Roberts will take you to that registration page and that's going to be a that show is not going to be a streaming show that is going to be all about um all about kind of my evolution through micro four thirds and talking about the photography and the video work that i do so that'll be a kind of a fun about what the work that i do event i'm actually really looking forward to it. i was planning it all out yesterday building my keynote slides and everything it's, it's gonna be a great show um and we're gonna do a little live demo a little shooting thing at the end with that uh, if you can't be there they've just given me the go ahead to stream that one on my channel so you know, no promises because I don't know what their internet connection is and hopefully it'll all work, but I will. I plan to mic up, stick a camera in the back and just stream it. It won't be, you know, there's no switching. It's not going to be any super exciting thing, but you'll be able to see the whole thing from there. It'd be better if you're there, but if you can't be there, you can watch it that way. Super awesome. Um, and then, of course, since we're going to be in Indianapolis, we must get together after that as well. Photojoseph.com slash IND or just go to my Photo Joseph Facebook page and find it there. December 9th, that's Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. Don't worry, that's 9 a.m., 5 to 7 p.m. So after that, that whole thing at Robert's Camera is like an all-day Lumix thing. So um, if you get there, check it out in person and, of course, come have a drink with me afterwards. That'll be super fun. Okay, Whew, that's a lot of stuff. Let's now get into anything in the chat before I do. Um, Shova McCoy said, small rig, I think I asked for this. Thank you. Well, you're quite welcome. And I think that's it. All right, let's uh, let's get into this thing. You know, let me pull up the small rig web page because I know there's questions about pricing. Um, and incidentally, there is a link down below, or you can just remember this. If you go to photojoseph.com slash small rig, it will redirect you to the small rig page. and You'll get a little thing that says, hey, hi, friend of Joseph. You get 10 or 15%. What's the discount? It's in the comments. 10%, sorry, it's 10% discount, um, which is great if you're finding, you know, if you're just going to spend three or 400 bucks, that's that's all right. There's nothing wrong with 10%. I will take it. So let me just quickly show you. Actually, let me just do it like this. Let's go to, I'm going to go to photojoseph.com. Oops, it helps if I spell my website, right? Photojoseph.com slash small rig. There we go. And it will take me right back to this exact same page that I'm on, but it will say... Pop up, there we go, bottom right corner. Joseph has sent you a gift, 10% off coupon, yay. So get that, so what we're looking at today is under, so we go to shop cages. Now this, today's video, I'm obviously showing this to you on the GH5, but as the title in the description says, these cages are meant are built for a lot of different cameras and they're very, very precise for that camera because they're completely contoured to it. So on the one hand, the disadvantage is that you buy it for this one camera model, and if you no longer have that camera model at some point in the future, then you need a different cage. So that's the bummer part of it, but the advantage of having it completely conform to it is it makes it much tighter and more compact, unlike a much bigger type of you know loose cage. So yeah, you win some, you lose some. I personally really like this. 
Anyway, so with that said, if you look under here, if you go to the shop thing, you look under cages, you see that they have them for all the different Sony, I mean, all, but you know, a bunch of Sony cameras, A6000, 6500 VA7s, A9s, and so on. Black Magic camera cages for the uh, cinema camera and the Ursa Mini. Panasonic camera cage, they don't list the individuals under there, but you click on that and you'll get to them. Red camera cages, Canon, uh, Fujifilm, it must be Nikon in here somewhere. Um, a lot of different cages, which is pretty sweet, right? Look, they even have an iPhone, I don't even see this, they have an iPhone camera cage? It's so funny. Wow, look at that. You could have an iPhone camera cage. That's kind of extreme. Okay, uh, let's go into the Panasonic camera cages, though. And what I am working with is, see, that's for GX85. Um, let's just do a quick little find for GH5 on this page. But this one, okay, this is a kind of a kit that has extra pieces in it. That's not what I got. Um, that's another kit. This is not what I got either. So this kit right here, this is neat. This one has what they call the helmet kit. So if you're going to use the XLR1, this gives you a place to put the XLR1, which is pretty awesome, and then has the handle. I did not get that either because I know that for the shooting that I want to use this for, I'm not going to be using the XLR1. What I got was, let's see, here we go. This guy right here, that must be it. It says for, no, that's just GH4, and that's the wrong one. Where were we? GH5, 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 GH5. Oh, there it is, the bottom right. <laughs> that's the one, $89. So that's the one that I got just the cage. You can see how it wraps around it. We're going to look at this for reals in just a moment here. And then I added a couple of accessories to it. I added the handle, which is, it's, I don't know, it shows up somewhere as an accessory, but it's the same handle you see here all over the place. And I added a little tiny accessory to mount the Inferno. And I added a couple of cold shoes, which I'm very glad that I did. Even though the device has cold shoes built into it, I thought, mm, they might not be in the right position, so I added a couple, and that's what I've got. So here's here's this ridiculous setup. This is what we're looking at today. Let's go for uh, let's go for the top down view here and see. Let me do it like this. I want to do that. Just kind of give you an overall view of what we're looking at here, and then I'll, I'll take it apart and show you the pieces. So the cage, you can see the cage around the camera in there, all wrapped around, nice and neat and tidy, and then. I have, let's do this, let's go to this view. Let's go that out a little bit wider. There we go, that'll be a better view for this. Get that into place. Um, let's step out of the way now, get out of the way, things. Um, I have mounted my Ninja. So that's the, there we go, there's that little tiny little extra bracket for the Ninja, and this oh, is, is actually tiltable, so I can tilt the Ninja while it's on here, and you just, you really I, ideally you put it in place and tighten it, because once you tilt it too many times, it's going to keep moving. Um, this is my Video Pro live streaming device, which is attached to one of the cold shoes that I added, so we'll, we'll show, that we'll look at that more closely. And then the handle, which I really wanted on the top, but, you know, you realize, hey, basic physics, I can't, uh, there's no room once I put this on here, there's nowhere to put the handle. I put it on the side, and onto that, I added another cold shoe. Again, we're going to take this all apart and see it closely. I added a cold shoe so I could add the microphone to it. So this whole thing is obviously insane, um, but it's more just showing what you can do, which I think is really awesome. So I've got my GH5, GH5, which could be shooting full-on 4K, uh, you know, Ultra HD, V-Log, whatever, outputting up to the Atomos. I could be recording on the Atomos, and then the Atomos is outputting a secondary signal at 1080p that goes into the video. I mean, how cool is that? Isn't that kind of kind of awesome? It's a little crazy, but I think it's fun. And then it's, it's at this point, you're two-handing it with the handle. That's why I put the handle on the side there. This is a great way to two-handle it, and now I can see all of this as it goes. So let's take this thing apart, shall we? I put it all together so that I can take it all apart. Um, starting, let's take off the Teradek video to start because you probably wouldn't, most people are gonna need that. I've got the little modem on there. Um, unscrew this thing from here, and we'll see that this has been, actually, I guess I didn't need to unscrew that. I could have just loosened this and taken this off. If we go to this close-up view here, now I'm going to zoom in, get a little bit closer view on this thing. Here we go. So that was the, that's the cold shoe where the small rig was attached to. You see it says small rig. Come on, you can focus. Um, just slide that off. So that cold shoe there has been attached to the rig. This is, this was one of the extra cold shoes. They're like $5 or something for the extra cold shoes. So that's on there. Um, so that's that off. And then, of course, the cable on there. Let's take that guy off of there. And that is going into the HDMI out from the Ninja. Incidentally, uh, I wanted... So the Ninja, we had, we'd had a chat about this when we did an unboxing of an Inferno with Sean. We'll link to that up here. We did an unboxing a week or two ago. 
And um, I think in his unboxing, he discovered it didn't come with the cable. This cable right here is stupidly expensive. This is an HDMI 2 Ultra HD 10-bit capable cable, and it's something like $90 for this little tiny but coiled stretchable cable. Okay, crazy. But if you go and you look for Atomos coiled cable, you'll find one that's only, is this $15? 10 or 15 or maybe 20 I think it was like $15. Anyway, again on B&H. Um, sorry, we'll link to that below. I know we haven't linked to everything yet, but we'll, we'll get it down there. Um, and you think, oh, well, it's cheap. No, this is not the one that you need for the 4K. But this one is perfectly capable of outputting the signal from here into the VDU. So I got this cable because I like this stretchy. This is super awesome um, so that I can go from here to here instead of just a regular straight cable. So if you're looking for a short but long, short but long, stretchy coiled HDMI cable, buy the old Atomos cable and you've got yourself covered there, which is pretty sweet. Okay. So there's that. So I'm not streaming. I can take that off. And now I'm just down to this part of the rig here. Let's get the microphone off of here next. So let's go ahead and do another little close up of this guy. Um, and let's see, I was getting close on here and I'm going to unplug it. I know it's kind of hard to see. Where we go? There we go. Unplug that. There we go. Someone's saying that the, uh, the image looks a little bit dark. It's just, it's all black. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of hard to adjust some of those things sometimes. Um, and let's get the, unscrew that, slide this guy out. So there is my microphone rigged out. So now, let's go ahead and zoom out on this camera a little bit more again. So now we've got just, I just put my finger on the lens, bravo, just the rig with the handle on it. Um, again, there's that other cold shoe. Now this is kind of cool. There's a cold shoe right here. This is where I really need somebody else operating the camera. Focus, 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 yes. There is a cold shoe right there that's built in. Um, again, all black, so kind of hard to see, but see, there's a cold shoe built in there, and there's a cold shoe built into the bottom of this. If you had mounted this handle on top of the camera, which is really what it's kind of designed for, then those cold shoes would be in really useful spots. Since I put it on the side, it really isn't, um, but that's why I added the other cold shoe onto it. So I bought two additional cold shoes, which is perfect because I needed both of them. None of the built-in cold shoes really worked out for me. Okay, so there's that. Now the HDMI cable on here that is plugged into this, let's get this into position here. Um, I don't need the bracket that comes with the GH5. I mean, it doesn't actually fit with this thing in place, but also I don't need it because this is nicely protected in here. So that HDMI cable is into there, and that of course is the one that's plugging into the Ninja. So if I zoom out of that a little bit, and we just go in here and take this guy out. It's a little tricky to get out because it's so snugly in there, but that's good. Right, nicely, snugly, there we go, that's off. Take this guy off of there. So now, I'm down to just these devices. Now clearly, they're not communicating anymore, but that's what that looks like. Okay, so now let's take, let's do this, let's take this off of here. Um, let's go into this guy, and this guy here, you can see these little guys there, those little Allen key wrench dealers you need there to tighten that up. That gets that tight, but as you can see now, it's, in, it's a very nice tightness, nice position. But if I just loosen this, this, if I loosen all the way, it'll come off. But what's cool about this is I can loosen it and then spin it around. So if I am going to do, and tighten it back down again, if I am going to do a live stream and I'm doing a self stream, I could have it just spun around and the cables are long enough. This is one of the cool advantages of the stretchy cables. They're long enough. I can just turn it and they'll just stretch to fit. And now I can be on camera. Hey, see myself up here. And then obviously be streaming through the um, streaming hardware that was on there. But let's just go ahead and take this off. So I'll take this guy off of here. There we go. There's our ninja taken off. So now we can get a close up of this little tiny accessory. So that's this guy here, this little tiny plate. Now this guy is screwed onto the cage. So this is not something you want to be loose. And so you can see in here the little screws in there. Now you might be thinking at this point, Hold on a second, that's a lot of stuff to screw in there. What if you need to make a change when you're out in the field and now you gotta carry an Allen key and you forgot it and... But they have thought of this. This is one of the great cool things about the handle. See this little handle in here? The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that if you look closely at this handle, there is an Allen key hidden in here. It is actually magnetically locked in. So it's not gonna fall out. Okay, you can listen, you can hear it's gonna find the right slot, here we go. Here we go. Let me get it straightened out and 
boom, hear that little snap? That was magnets pulling it in. So that's pretty awesome. So that is the same key that you use for everything. I can use that to tighten my take off or move my um, uh, cold shoe if I need to. If I want to take this handle off and put it on the top, I can do all that. So let's let's actually do that. This is going to be kind of the part of the fun of this thing. I'm going to, let's see, let's go for a top down view. Now, so any comments coming up? Uh, yeah, comment. Shab Shaba says, I didn't know that you have to take off the handle if you're using the Atomos. Do you think it's the same situation with the sound device and handle? Well, remember, the sound, if you're going to put, by sound device, I'm assuming you mean the XLR1, that has the, what do they call it, the shoe? No, not the shoe. They called it the um, helmet, right? That is this guy here. So if you get the helmet kit, the XLR1 would sit here, and the handle attaches to the helmet. So it's the same handle, but it attaches there. So now you've got, you still have the handle on top. To attach the Atomos, yeah, you do need to take the handle off if you bought it with the helmet. And I bought it separately, so it didn't come with it attached already. Um, I don't, I don't know where you would, you would put the Atomos with the handle on there. I suppose, could you put it? No, you couldn't put the Atomos onto the handle either because it's not wide enough for that. So yeah, this is, this is where it's designed to go. Anyway, so let's do, let's go here to top down and Let's spin it around. I'm going to spin this around this way so you can actually see. And let's just uh, take this little guy off of here. So you've got to see the top of my lovely bald head. Okay, now I'm going to have to get in there with a little bit of muscle. Get this thing off of there. And there we go. That's open. And, and that's open. All right, there we go. Let's get those guys off. So now take this guy off of here. These are, it's really nicely made. I have to say, all of this feels like very, very quality gear. So here is the little, oops, here is the little, zoom into that nice and tight. Um, here we go. There's the little arm. This is like a, is it 10 or $20 piece here? So not, not crazy expensive at all. Uh, again, you can, you tighten it with these to tighten the, the hinging on it. But this little thing here is awesome. This allows you to, to mount it clearly, very strongly onto the cage and then put your Atomos device on top of that. So there's that part of it. So now let's go back to here. And the next step is to get the handle off. So let's say I want to put the handle on top. So we're going to do that. Let's go ahead and take this handle off of here. Take that there and loosen that one there. Oh, the handle, by the way, uh, let's see here. This, I should show you this too, which is really neat. Uh, back to this close-up view. So the handle, kind of get that into view here. If I loosen these, I can slide the handle up and down on the bar, so I can position the handle wherever I want it. So I don't want the handle more forward or backward or you know whatever's comfortable for me or just works with my setup. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's take this guy off of here. And so I love that the Allen key is built into the handle or you know has a, a home in the handle. I think that is just incredibly cool. Very well thought out. Okay. So there's that. So now you can see how I've basically mounted, I've built this thing sideways because it is meant, you can do it, come on, digital camera, there we go. Um, I have mounted this thing sideways. It's meant to be mounted like this. So there's your top down view, but I've put this cold shoe on the side. But if you don't do that, then you've already got a cold shoe built in there and one on the back, which is interesting, I suppose, if you were going to do it this way. I'm not quite sure where you'd use that one, but anyway, it's there, it's an option. So now let's go ahead and just put this thing on the top where it was originally designed to go. And yeah, here, let me, I'll do a little close up here so you can really see how this whole thing comes together. Find the right position, there it is. And let's see, I would go this way and just simply drop that guy in. Start threading those little screws in there. And there's two positions on it. You can put it forward or backward. I don't know what advantage, disadvantage one way or the other, but you can. This is really hard to do while well, looking at a camera, looking at a view backwards, trying to figure out where these positions are. There we go. Get that into place. Excellent. All right, let's get that thing in there nice and snug. Center, did I off center that? Oh, I used the wrong, I grabbed the wrong hole. It's not centered. Let's do it over here. No jokes, please. There we go. Mount that into place. Mount this guy into place. Excellent. Now it's all coming together. Now let's just tighten that guy down. Ooh, maybe tighten a little bit more than that. <laughs> nice and tight. And one more. Nice and tight. Super. So now, God, that feels so light now. It's funny now that I've taken off the Atomos. Um, now there's your full-on just handle cage ready to go. So if you just want to do that. So now I can open up the LCD, go this way, flying down, whatever you're doing. And now I could mount my microphone. Let's take advantage of this. Let's put that on here. 
So if I don't want the Atomos, which let's face it, you're not usually shooting with the Atomos, this is a, a great way to add a handle. So now I've got, I would probably take this cold shoe off because that's kind of pumping me in the hand right now, but that's easy to do. Um, in fact, let's just do it because, hey, that's what we're here for. Let's just take that guy off as well. And just don't lose your little parts. Keep a little Ziploc baggie handy. There we go. So now I've got that nice lightweight. The cage itself is very light. I don't know the numbers and you could look it up if you really want to, but the cage itself is very light. So I've got that. So all I've added at this point is the handle because let's face it, the microphone could easily be attached to the hot shoe on the camera. But if you like that handle, you like, you like to be able to move the camera that way you can. And of course, at this point I could attach something else. So let's say that I did want to go back to my whole streaming thing, right? Which is, let's face it, this is a bit more realistic instead of doing the Atomos and the streaming. Um, if I was doing that, then it really would be using the Atomos as a confidence monitor, which, you know what, scratch what I just said. That's totally how I do this, because that's awesome. Uh, but let's go and put this guy onto this cold shoe here. Get that in the right spot. There it is. Get that into the cold shoe on there. Lock that into place. Uh -huh. Let's get my cheap cable up, not my expensive Atomos cable. Get the one. So the difference between the two, if you're looking at them, if you've got them in your bag and you're like, wait, which one is which? Um... Here we go. The one with the Atomos logo is the spendy cable. The one without it is the not spendy cable. It must say Atomos somewhere on it. it came in an Atomos bag, which, yeah, it doesn't say Atomos anywhere on there. Oh, well, go figure. Um, it did come in an Atomos bag, though. All right, so I'll take that one, and then I can do my HDMI in. And at this point, if I wanted to put that HDMI lock on there that comes with your GH5, you could certainly do that. If you're going to be moving it around, you probably would want to because that would be bad to lose your connection that way. Pop that into there. Pop this into here so I can have a live connection. And voila, there we go. So that's kind of bumps the hand a little bit there, but, you know, you'll manage. You'll live. And if you really don't like it there, you can move it to somewhere else. I mean, I could, look, this is what's so cool about this. I could take this cold shoe, I could put it on the side, and then I could mount my streaming hardware on the side, right? I mean, how awesome is that? So that's what makes this so cool and versatile is that you can do just about anything you want on there. Um, we're getting ready to wrap this thing up here. So if you have questions or comments about this, make sure you throw them into the chat before we go because it's almost time to go. Uh, and let's just, let me put this thing on the side here just for fun. Let's put this on the side. It's like a, uh, what is it called? Rector, re rector sets? Isn't that what the thing was called as a kid? Erector sets. That was the one. Erector sets. So neat. That's what this is. It's an erector set for photographers. All right, let's put this thing on here and cinematographers. Put that on there, lock that in. Let's, set, let's see, can I set that down? Maybe go the other direction. Let me do it that way. Oh, you know, you got options, man. You got options. It's actually kind of cool. Because once it's on, I don't really need to see it. So I don't care if I can, if it's visible to me or not. I stick the antenna out that way if I want to. Plug this thing into the camera. And you got options, man. I love it. That is so much fun. That is cool. So there you go. That is the small rig. I'm super impressed. It just came a couple days ago. Uh, I haven't used it in the field yet. I will be taking this monstrosity to New York with me because why not? Uh, you know, nothing like shooting a vlog with all this stuff on top of it. Uh, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh, there is, I don't know if you saw this, there is a cold shoe here. So if, let's say, let's get this there we go. Let's get this off of here. If I didn't have the handle or if I don't want it there, there is a cold shoe over here. Let's get a little close-up of that. Uh, get that into place. Here we go. So there is a cold shoe on the cage right there. Again, I realize it's kind of hard to see because it's all black on black, but that could, I can slide the microphone into there. I think I can go from the front or the back. Yeah. Slide that into there, mount that down. And now my handle is completely free and clear. I actually quite like that. The handle is now completely free and clear of the microphone. That might be an even better way to do it. It's a little bit of an angle. That, that's kind of cool. That looks awesome. Yeah, and then it's not sticking up and out so much. I like that better. Fun. Fun and games. So there you go. That's it. Any other questions on here? Uh, I do not think so. Brian says, I played with my dad's old one from the 60s. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, he's talking about erector sets. He's not talking about erector sets. Um, all right, here, let's see here. Shelba's got another silly question that has a camera model that's rumored, so we're not going to respond to that. Daddy MCC says, I remember the erector set. Spent hours playing with that, showing our age. Yes, yes, yes. We are a bunch of old people here, aren't we? Um, 
Uh, I think that was it. No other questions coming up that are related to this. Well, there you go. All right, folks. Hey, Ryan, did the, the Facebook stream work? Did anybody comment over there? No. No, but it did, but it is working. It is. People are commenting. Excellent. Oh, good. Okay, Yusufa is from um, Epifan, so that means he's watching over there as requested to see that it works. So that's excellent. So we've got the whole Facebook thing working now, too. Fantastic. Now I just got to figure out how to integrate the comments. If anybody out there knows of an app, knows of an app that will take comments from d multiple live streams, uh, your YouTube channel stream and your Facebook stream, and aggregate them into one streaming chat, let me know. And if there isn't one, if any of you are software developers and would like to work on that, give me a call. This is an app that I think that the market could absolutely use. I know this, I think this capability is built into some streaming services, but not as a standalone app as far as I've ever seen. And it has to be possible because there is an API to extract the chat. If you look at the X2, for example, the Epifan X2, if you're doing a YouTube stream, the, the Epifan X2 does um, a single stream to either YouTube or Facebook. It doesn't do both simultaneously. It's a little economical box. But whichever one you're doing, you can see your chat system show up on its interface. So they're taking the chat and putting it on their interface. You can do that for Facebook and for YouTube. So there's an API to pull the chat stream. So I just need an app that pulls in both of those and aggregates them into a single continuous stream. And a little logo next to it. This one came from Facebook, this one from YouTube. Any software developers out there that are interested in this, give me a call. Let's work on this because I think this would be pretty awesome. Okay. That's that. Let's wrap this thing up, shall we? This has been another fun little show. I love having you guys here live. It's always good. Again, if you missed the live show, do tune in 9.30 a.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Tune in live and see what we got. And that is all there is to it. Thanks a bunch, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.